complaints of Miriam and Aaron is what we'll be reading through today in Numbers chapter 12. So please grab your Bibles, read along with me as we get started on the book of Numbers chapter 12. Um, so uh, the story thus far, we've had um, uh, the Israelites, they escaped Egypt. It's been about two years. God's been putting a lot of things in place. Uh, we just had um, a bunch of people uh, start complaining uh, that they weren't eating enough meat and doing all of this stuff and longing to be in slavery. Um, and uh, there was a couple of really powerful imagery stuff. Um, there was also um, a thing where God put them to the test and some people failed and it cost them their lives. Um, but uh, things are going to continue. And um, like one of the main themes throughout the book of Numbers is all the ways that the Israelites kind of uh, betrayed and complain and God's response. And uh, that's kind of the, the theme of Numbers. Um, and a lot of what happens in this journey uh, are the things that are still happening today with uh, our relationships with God. So... Uh, I'm going to move my arm so Mew gets into a bit of a different spot so I can hold my Bible. Uh, and then, yeah, let's get started. Milu, what are you doing? She doesn't quite know exactly what she wants to do yet. Nope, not that. <laughs> she had butted the uh, computer. She's right down here. Hey, Mew. Hey, Mew. Anyways, um, she'll get settled then. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get started. Chapter 12, Complaints uh, of Miriam and Aaron. While they were at Hezroth, Miriam and Aaron criticized Moses because he had married a Cushite woman. They said, has the Lord spoken only through Moses? Hasn't he spoken through us too? But the Lord heard them. Now Moses was very humble, more humble than any other person on earth. So immediately the Lord called Moses, Aaron, and Miriam and said, Go out to the tabernacle, all three of you. So the three went to the tabernacle. Then the Lord uh, descended in a pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tabernacle. Aaron and Miriam, he called, and they stepped forward. And the Lord said to them, Now, Listen to what I say. If there were prophets among you, I, the Lord, would reveal myself in visions. I would speak to them in dreams, but not with my servant Moses. All of my house, he is the one I trust. Of all of my house, he's the one I trust. I speak to him face to face clearly and not in riddles. He sees the Lord as he is. So why were you not afraid to criticize my servant Moses? Then the Lord was very angry with them, and he departed. As the cloud moved from above the tabernacle, there stood Miriam, her skin as white as snow from leprosy. When Aaron saw what had happened to her, he cried out to Moses, Oh, my master, please do not punish us for this sin we have so foolishly committed. Don't let her be like a stillborn baby already uh, decayed at birth. Um, so Moses cried out to the Lord, Oh God, I beg you, please heal her. But the Lord said to Moses, If her father had done nothing more than spit in her face, wouldn't she be defiled for seven days? So keep her outside the camp for seven days, and after she may be accepted back. So Miriam was kept outside the camp for seven days, and the people waited until she brought back uh, before they traveled again. Then they left Hezroth, the Hezroth camp, and camped in the wilderness of Paran. We got out of blessings of the reading of Numbers chapter 12. So this is an interesting one for sure. Um, and it's kind of cool. 
Uh, so, and you might be like, how is this cool? Uh, like, they got leprosy and stuff. So, you have Aaron, who uh, has been with Moses along the whole journey. Um, and he knows uh, what God has done through him, how God has spoken with Moses. And, um, you know, God has used Aaron as well in some pretty miraculous and powerful ways. But we also have seen Aaron make some pretty big mistakes as well, um, where he's favored people over God. So, and like, in like one of the big ones that came to mind is Moses went up uh, to write the Ten Commandments and Aaron's responsible for all the people. And the people are all like, yeah, we want to bail to God or whatever. So he's like, fine, let's collect a bunch of gold and we'll worship Baal. Okay? Is that going to appease you guys? And he was more worried, uh, not about the truth and of their situation, but by bending a knee to a bunch of people that were complaining. So we've seen how Aaron has messed up. And he's done it a few times. Yet God has still put him in a very important uh, role, right? He's like the father, the head of the priests, the head of the, the church in many ways. Um, and he's responsible for you know, looking after a lot of people and all the sacrifices and, you know, in charge of like basically everything. He's Moses' second in command. And uh, you, then him and Miriam. You know, they start getting jealous. They're like, well, God's done this and that, like, with us and so on and so forth. So why is Moses the one in the center? How come Moses is the one doing all this? So jealousy rises up. They stop appreciating what they have and they want what somebody else has. And that's something that kind of angers God. Now, yes, Miriam gets sick. Uh, someone that was almost interested in if they kept on that way of thinking may have wanted to uh, overthrow, kill Moses. Like that kind of thinking can lead people, especially during this time, to those extremes. And Moses, very much like Jesus, someone who forgave someone that betrayed them, um, asked for forgiveness. I think that's a really powerful thing. But the other thing here is jealousy. And a reminder to appreciate what we have and not get fixated on what we don't. And that can be extremely hard um, at certain points in our lives when we're comparing ourselves to this, that, and the other. But um, I was talking with someone yesterday. We are so rich in this country. Um, we have so, so much. If you add up all the clothes they're wearing, how much they cost, how long would it have it taken someone to work just to afford what you're wearing? They bought it all at full price. And then take a good wage in like Mexico, which the last time I looked was about $70 a week. I'm sure it's a bit better now, but Google it. Google what a good wage is in Mexico. Last time I Googled it, it was 70 bucks. How long would have it taken then? In a third world country, it's like five dollars a month. How long would have it taken then? We have access and privilege to not only a lot of clean drinking water, a lot of freedoms to protest without uh, fear of our lives. We have uh, so many freedoms in this country, um, and we have access to clean drinking water, clean this. We have access to food banks if we need food, and so on and so forth. So if you have a dollar in your possession, you are richer than like 80% of the world being in this country with just a dollar. Um, definitely not richer than our neighbors or any of that jazz, but when we start thinking globally, we have a lot. And with that, we also have a lot to offer. Um, I brought a group of uh, high school students down to Toronto to hand out some bank lunches. And um, as we were going around handing out bag lunches, this one guy uh, who was panhandling on the side of the road 
um, was so blown away by their generosity and their willingness to travel to Toronto to walk around and to offer this momentary kind of relief to some people that they didn't know. He was blown away by it and he took um, a bunch of what he had earned that day, uh, gave it to the teachers and was like, you know, uh, just in so much gratitude. Like they've come down to serve us. I want to represent the homeless people of Toronto and say thank you by giving them a pizza party. And he gave us like 30 or $40 in change uh, to throw these kids a pizza party because um, he was able to do that. Um, and he was so thankful. And there's two things there. One, you know, sometimes our generosity and our good deeds can inspire others to do likewise. And two, even when we think we have nothing to give, nothing to offer, I'm not talking about being burnt out or being, you know, just kind of stretched too thin, but when we're feeling insignificant with what we have to offer, there's a reminder that you have something. Even that homeless guy in Toronto had something to offer and it's kept me inspired for the years that have followed. It's been at least five years since that happened. And I've told the story many, many times um, because it's just one of those things that blew me away. And it's one of those things that often gets me emotional when people have nothing and they still have something to give. Uh, I think that's a really powerful, powerful thing. Um, so yeah, to recap today, uh, questions about jealousy question uh jealousy was kind of part of that main thing that came in and came through um so one way to combat that is to appreciate what we have and to have that attitude of thankfulness that we've talked about quite a few times and um then uh lastly forgiveness even for those that want to betray us and who are jealous of us have mercy to them and one of the things that god pointed out on why he trusts Moses and this is something that stood out to me and I almost forgot all about it is Moses humbleness he was the most humble guy on earth um, so that's pretty high praise and that's one of the ways that God was able to that's one of the, the, the defining characteristics on why God trusts Moses. And I think that's really cool. Um, so, yeah. Let's pray. AJC, awesome Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for uh, Acts, or not Acts, Numbers chapter 12. Um, and the lessons um, about jealousy. Um, <clears throat> Lord, help us not to be jealous. And when jealousy enters into our minds and into our thoughts, help us to look and see what you're doing and appreciate it. Um, and like, Lord, there are reasons why you didn't trust Aaron. And he hadn't really proven himself to have the level of access to you that Moses did. Um, he uh, far too often uh, would be a people pleaser instead of someone that would glorify you and be willing to be hated by you. Uh, by people and not by you. Um, so, Lord, um, I lift up uh, us and our jealousy and our just lusting after things that our friends and neighbors have. Help us to appreciate what we have and not get focused on what other people do. Lord, help us to see what we have to offer, what we have to give and help us uh, to not feel worthless um, in that and to feel um, incapable. Uh, and Lord, yeah, thank you so much uh, for the stories that I've had in my own life where I've got to see, see that play out in some pretty awesome ways. Um, Lord, help us to have that attitude of forgiveness. And help us to become less humble. Uh, like whether it's that recipe of thinking of ourselves as less 
or not as less, but less. That's the saying. Don't think of yourself as less, but think of yourself less is uh, kind of that recipe, that bumper sticker way of getting to be humble, Lord. Um, lift up my knees as well for healing there and may today be a great day to glorify you and uh, help give us peace, help our dreams as we go to bed tonight uh, to be positive, good dreams. And uh, Lord, thank you for all the ways that you love us, you bless us, and you, you guide us and direct us. Lord, help us to act justly, to love mercy. And today, perhaps the most important of the, part of that prayer, to humbly walk with you, Lord. And I thank you for Moses' example. Um, even though he is a failed or a fallen, broken um, a person that has had many mistakes, I thank you that the heroes of faith make many, many mistakes and help us to forgive those who have hurt us, who plan to betray us, who look upon us with jealousy and or anger. Help us to forgive as Moses forgave Miriam, how you forgave those that put you up on the cross, as you forgave us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right. Um, so that's it for today. Have a fantastic day. God bless.